Hello, dear friends. My name is Sam Matthews. I am an artist and business owner in Blairstown, New Jersey, and I'm here to show you a little bit of how to do some face painting because a lot of places this summer might not really be doing face painting because of our current situation in life. So I'm gonna give you a tutorial on how to do some yourself. First up is telling you about the paint. I love using the brand Snazaroo. They sell it at Michael's and you can use coupons to get the big palettes. They do sell it in multiple cakes and different colors, but they also sell smaller kits. I went and got the big kahuna because I use it all the time. Now it looks messy because I use it all the time. So this is what it looks like. It's gigantic, it has tons of colors. The only color it doesn't have is brown and purple. So you do have to mix those yourself. But what I'm gonna show you today is how to paint a butterfly. So whether this is on yourself or on a kiddo, I'm gonna show you how to do it on my own face. What you're gonna need are a medium sized paintbrush and a smaller paintbrush. Now I'm a painter, so I have tons of different kinds of brushes all around, so I use whatever I can. So those you could pick up as well from Michaels for super cheap. Um, they don't have to be super special, just nice and soft. And you're gonna need a glass of water, a paper towel, and your paint. So now you can use any face paint you have. You don't have to use Snazaroo paint. This is just what my favorite is because it has a nice consistency. It comes off really easily and it's just a nice one. So let's get started. So I'm gonna do a butterfly. Now this is one of my most requested paints and uh, you can change up the colors however you want. It doesn't have to be exactly as my coloring. I'm just gonna make sure my hair is back out of the way. All right, so I like to keep my brush nice and wet when I'm doing this. And when you mix it with the paint, it kind of is like watercolor in a sense where like these don't really dry out. Um, and the more water you add to it, the looser it gets and the more fluid it gets. So I'm gonna do the body of the butterfly here on my nose. And then I'm gonna make the wings go over my eyes and down across here. And I'm gonna do kind of like an ombre effect with the colors. All right, so I also have a mirror that I might use close up to see myself instead of just pushing my face into the camera. So we're gonna start with a circle oval-ish shape. I am gonna use this, I think, for the head. Then an, a long oval for the body. And now my lining might not be perfect. I am doing it on myself, but we will do our best. Okay. And then one for the bottom. It's also helpful to have some Q-tips on deck. If you make a mistake, you can always help correct it with Q-tips. to get it perfectly symmetrical. Okay, close enough. Now we're gonna move on to the wings. Now what I like to do is I'm gonna do all my colors first and then go in and outline everything at the end with black. So this butterfly goes from yellow to orange to red to pink and back down and with some blues in the corner. I'm just gonna kind of feather it around the area where the wings are gonna go. And I go over my eyebrows because they're very dark. And this is up to you if you wanna go in the area of your eyelid. Um, I like to just because it gives it like kind of a cooler effect in my opinion. Takes a couple layers to go over the eyebrows, but that's okay. So I do both sides yellow. And you can do different colors if, if you want. You can do whatever color scheme you like best. And I leave it kind of choppy and not like a straight line because it's easier to blend your next color in with it then. 
Okay. So in butterflies, this is good for kids or adults. Anybody. Looks beautiful. All right, now I'm gonna do orange. And I'm gonna try to paint lightly in the area where the yellow is started to kind of help blend it together. You kind of do something called feathering when you're trying to blend colors together. It means you like lightly press over the area that you want to blend in with the next color so it's not too much paint. And it helps blend it nicely so that it's not just choppy. Okay, this one's a little bit higher. Great. Now to red. This is where I'll start to shape the wing. This is non-toxic paint. It, it comes off very easily with soap and water or makeup remover wipes. And each kiddo's face is a little bit different, so maybe they have more space for wings on the side here than up on the top. Maybe they do have more room for the top to go higher. So it all just depends on who you're painting. It's helpful to try to keep it symmetrical. It does dry fairly quickly too, as long as you don't use too much water. I'm gonna bring this down to blue at the end here. Something that I think we should have more of in life are adults wearing face paint. It's just like fun makeup, right? So if you feel like it, paint your own face today. If you get too much paint on your brush, you can kind of wipe it off on your paper towel so that it's easier to dry brush and blend it together. Okay, now for blue. Some people will sponge this part, but if you use the brush lightly enough and it's a soft enough brush, um, you should be able to get the same effect and blend it well. But like I said, it takes practice. Okay, now I'm going to take my smaller brush and start to outline. Now be patient with me. I'll probably end up speeding this part up because I'm gonna try to take my time so it looks really good. But it just takes a steady hand and some practice and a nice flow of paint. You wanna have the right consistency so that way it flows easily. You can, if you feel like you are able to get a hold of a liner brush, I don't have a really good example, but like a paintbrush that has a longer tip to it, like that, that might be more helpful. I'm just gonna use this one because I've used it before. All right, see you in a minute. We're gonna line everything now. Something that's helpful is to make sure that the undercolor paint is fully dry before you start doing outlining. Especially if it's hot out and you're doing it when it, it is um, like sweaty or raining, you wanna make sure it's fully dry before you start to paint your outlining or else everything will blend together. Quick tip. Now I'm gonna take some white and try to add some pops here and there to help add some contrast 
and to spice it up a little bit. You also could add some glitter if you have glitter. Um, what's helpful is if you put some either water down first or some white paint and then tap the glitter onto it with your finger. All right, now I'm just gonna touch it up with a little bit more black and we'll be done. Now you can add any other details you'd like to this if you want. You can add other dots or stripes or patterns. Every butterfly is very different. So feel free to add your own creative flair to this. All right, I think we are done. There's your butterfly. Good luck painting yourself. You can do it on yourself or you can do it on a friend or on a kiddo in your life. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can follow my other creative adventures at Art Across Borders on Facebook and Instagram and my website, artacrossborders.com. Thanks so much and make sure to support your local library, check out books and all their other amazing resources they're providing for our communities during this time. Thanks guys.